Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel where we talk about skincare, grooming and sometimes hair so that sounds like your thing, make sure you are subscribed. Also, come and follow me on Instagram where I post a lot of stuff you're not going to see here on YouTube. First of all, <laughs> please excuse my skin throughout this video. If you haven't seen the video where I put my skin through absolute torture, please go and watch it to make it worth my while. My skin is still suffering. <sighs> I just want to share this video because as you know, I am i don't really enjoy doing reaction videos on this channel. First of all, because I'm just a consumer who enjoys a lot of skincare. So really my opinions are all about personal opinions, personal experience, and really talking about how what someone's doing in the, their skincare routine would affect me more than how it affects them, if that makes sense. However, they do perform very, very well over on my Facebook page. So from this month onwards, there will be more exclusive content over on my Facebook page, as well as short and versions of the videos that you get here on YouTube. But I'm gonna post this video here that was made for Facebook, um, just so you can kind of see, let me know what you think. <laughs> so today we're gonna to be taking a look at a few different parts of celebrity skincare routines, seeing what they're doing, if they make any mistakes. The link for my Facebook will be in the description box down below. So yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at some celebrity skincare routines and seeing if there's any mistakes they're making, any obvious mistakes, or if they have their skincare down, if it's perfection. Let's have a look. Let's start off with Kylie Jenner, and this is from her Kylie Skin launch. Start with my face wash, probably my favorite product in the line. It just makes my face feel so clean, and it also retains your natural moisture in your face. So, you really only need one pump. I've used this product, it's a very good basic cleanser. It does its job, and it, yeah, it doesn't make your skin feel void of any moisture. I went through a lot of samples to get the perfect amount of just foaminess and creaminess. The scent is amazing. Why is she not doing her forehead? That's weird. Now I'm gonna go in with my walnut face scrub. I actually wrote all of these descriptions on the back, handwritten by Kylie. Our gentle yet effective walnut exfoliator is essential for achieving a fresh face. It is packed with a cocktail of anti-inflammatory ingredients and skin smoothing fruit extracts that buff away- mm -hmm. A physical scrub is not the way to go for me. I personally find them very irritating. She says anti-inflammatory, and whilst they're not gonna cut up your face and immediately inflame your skin, they're not the best option for people with sensitive skin. I have like a little bout of rosacea at the moment, so I would avoid any kind of exfoliation at the moment, but especially physical exfoliators, walnut. Walnuts, again, I've tried this product. You can feel those granules. When you have big granules in an exfoliating product like apricot or walnut in a scrub, when you feel those granules, you kind of have an urge to push harder on the skin and scrub the skin. I think scrubbing is the word we want to avoid. You get some amazing exfoliators with more of a sandy texture, like rice powders, which I would personally opt for if you did want a physical exfoliation over something as harsh as walnut. The dead skin cells to reveal a soft, radiant complexion. Scrubs can be kind of harsh on your skin when you just put it on dry. So I'm gonna wet my face a little. Scrubs can be kind of harsh on your skin whenever, not just on dry skin. But yeah, it, it will make it feel a little bit more harsh, but they can be harsh on your skin on any damp or dry skin. I'm gonna rub mainly like around my nose. I'm gonna avoid the delicate skin around my eyes. She's not gonna do her forehead again. It smells really good. We actually put no fragrance in a lot of our products. So it just smells like pure. Delicious walnuts, you wanna wash it right off. It smells really good, but they put no fragrance in a lot of their products. If your product smells, there's fragrance in there. I think what she's referring to is artificial fragrance. It's still fragrance. Now, not everyone is gonna have a reaction to fragrance. Whilst fragrance is an irritant, if you have um, skin that's easily sensitized to stuff, if your skin barrier is compromised, stay away from fragrance, but it doesn't mean that everyone's gonna have a bad reaction to fragrance. The problem is though, when people call their products fragrance-free because they don't contain synthetics, Fragrance is fragrance, no matter where it comes from. Okay, so now I'm gonna use my vanilla milk toner, which smells delicious. Again, it smells delicious, but a lot of her products are fragrance free. This is something that brands will always do. They'll say their products are fragrance free when what they mean is free from artificial fragrance. It's very fast and easy to use toner. This really helps me um, remove any surviving makeup after my um, foaming face wash. So this- 
Okay, at the toner stage, ideally you don't want any makeup, sunscreen, whatever left on your face. And this is where I think a good double cleanse comes in. That's whether you're using an oil cleanser or a um, foaming cleanser. A double cleanse is going to ensure that you have that makeup off in the first cleanse so that your second cleanse can cleanse your skin. Then your toner can hydrate your skin. The... The job of a toner isn't to cleanse your skin, so you shouldn't be seeing any makeup residue um, left from your cleanser. But yes, if you're seeing leftover makeup at this stage, it means you haven't cleansed enough properly. You haven't cleansed properly. This really helps just ensure that my face is as clean as possible before I go to sleep. So I'm just gonna do a little dot. Again, not cleansing stage, it's a hydrating a stage. Toner really helps prepare my face for my serum and my moisturizer. So I'm just gonna wipe this all over. If we're being super picky, just because she's exfoliated, I wouldn't then go in and use a cotton pad to apply the toner. Again, she's saying it's to wipe away excess makeup, which shouldn't be there anyway. So really you want to put it in the palm of your hands and pat lightly over the skin to hydrate your skin. Um, cotton pads are a very gentle, very, very gentle light exfoliation. But if we're being super picky, technically she's exfoliated twice. Okay, next we're gonna go in with Troy, Troy Savan, Troy Savan, Troy, Troy. So before everything got shut down, I got these because I was actually filming a movie in Atlanta. Clearly I'm not wearing any makeup today considering I've given up completely, but. So makeup wipes, again, <laughs> they're not the worst thing, but they they just don't do the job they're supposed to do. I feel like makeup wipes are good for when you're stuck at a friend's house and you forgot your cleanser, you could use a makeup wipe. It doesn't necessarily remove all your makeup though. What you're doing with a makeup wipe is moving around that makeup. Of course you're gonna get like the surface makeup off and you're gonna see like the black, you know, mascara, eyeliner, all that kind of stuff come off your lipstick, but it's not good enough to cleanse your skin. A makeup wipe shouldn't be used as a first cleanse or a cleanser whatsoever. They're also, they're also bad for the environment, like a lot of, uh, many, many other things, but I feel like makeup wipes is something we can all easily stop using to help um, contribute to less waste. With makeup wipes, you do get some makeup wipes that say they're biodegradable. That is an unregulated term within the skincare realm. Anything is biodegradable eventually. So technically you can put biodegradable on your packaging. What you want to look out for when it comes to makeup wipes, if you are going to buy them is compostable. I believe simple, um, do some compostable makeup wipes. Even better for the environment, just don't buy them. I'm not really picky about cleansers in general. This is my, my cleanser at the moment. It's the Kiel ultra facial oil free cleanser. So let me wipe my face and do some of that. Get in there, clean this skin, clean all this. Cleansers are cleansers. They're gonna do what they need to do. What I would say though is that you do kind of have to be picky about cleansers because if you've got dry skin, for example, you wouldn't want to use an oil-free cleanser. Oil-free cleansers are usually obviously made for people with very oily skin and they tend to be a lot more stripping of our natural oils than say like a milky cleanser, an oil cleanser. So you do wanna be a little bit picky about it, but I guess at the end of the day, it's all about the, the following steps and how you're gonna add moisture and hydration back to your skin. My latest shaving secret is this bulldog original shave gel. It's got aloe, camelina, and green tea in it. Bulldog is a really, really good brand, um, not sponsored, but they um, find a lot of their ingredients, a lot of their formulations. They go to Korea, South Korea, and are very, very inspired by their formulations and products. They are targeted at men, but the ingredients, of course, are for everyone. They're, I know a lot of like my female friends use their shaving products for their legs, um, for their bodies, because it's such a nice shaving foam. Actually, I try to wet my face with like the hottest water that I can possibly stand and try and like actually massage it in to sort of soften the hair. <laughs> uh, okay, mm, so applying the hottest water, you should never apply the hottest water that you can stand to your skin. This is why you don't um, wash your face in the shower really because usually the, the water that we shower with is a lot hotter than what our face can handle. You want to use lukewarm water when you're washing your face, whenever you're applying water to your face. If you're applying water that's too hot, you can strip your skin of hydration. You can lose any of that water content and that leads to dry skin. It can lead to very easily irritated skin. What I would do instead is put that water on a flannel, on a washcloth, leave it on my face for like maybe five minutes. Soften your hairs that way because you could potentially be damaging your skin this way. Did I mention that there is a function for the silly hat? It's to keep my hair out of my face so that I can like get all up in the spots, you know? <laughs> 
I was wondering about that. I mean, that's fine. For me, that would annoy me because it looks like it's in the way. But yes, getting your hair out of your face when you're washing your face, I feel like is such an obvious thing to do, but a lot of people don't do it. If you have a lot of product in your hair, like myself, you don't want your hair coming into your face and then you're washing your face with all that product from your hair going onto your face. A lot of styling products contain a lot of oils, um, the kind of oils that we don't want on our skin. So keep that hair back. From living with my sister at the time, I'll steal some of her products, like Glossier Soothing Face Mist. Why the hell not? My face feels so dry after I wash it. Like I feel like once it dries, it could almost like crack. You know that feeling? So the reason he's getting that feeling, there could be a few reasons here. He's an oil-free moisturizer. Um, again, made for people with oily skin. I'm not sure if he said his skin type, but if he's more towards the combination dry stage, he should look for milkier products, non-foaming. He should look for gels, oil cleansers, rather than oil-free cleansers you know because it's obviously not for his skin also the boiling hot water the water that he could just about stand wouldn't have helped with that as well again it would have it would have contributed to taking any of that kind of like moisture out of his skin and that's probably why he's getting that tight kind of like uh, kind of feeling on his face you know but yeah a hydration stage is important um in my opinion i do like to use toners for that reason next we're going to go on to gwyneth paltrow who had just an awful awful <laughs> documentary on Netflix full of fear-mongering misinformation about the beauty community, a lot of experts with misleading information. So I'm kind of already dreading what she's going to be doing with her skincare routine. Guide to glowing skin. Hello everybody, welcome to my bathroom. Um this is one of my pet peeves, right, is when people don't look at the camera, they do this instead when they're talking. Like, look at the camera. Um, I'm going to take you through my sort of end of office day routine into evening. So I currently have some makeup on. So I'm gonna take my beautiful luminous melting cleanser and it is a miracle for removing. It's not a miracle, it's an oil cleanser. It's gonna remove your makeup. I really don't, <laughs> I really don't like it when brands call their products miracle products. It's not a miracle. The product has literally been formulated to do what it needs to do. It's a good product I'm guessing is, is an oil cleanser, you know? But yeah, it's good that she's oil cleansing to help remove that makeup. I'm gonna use my Miracle, the exfoliating instant facial. Another Miracle product from her own brand, surprisingly. Which I put on every single day, even though the tube says just to do it three times a week. That's my secret to young, fresh looking skin. So I'm guessing this is um, an exfoliating mask with some kind of chemical exfoliant in. So probably an AHA you find a lot in here, like a glycolic acid. I should look at the ingredients, but I can't be bothered. <laughs> You can use these every day, but you have to build your skin up to tolerate it. I personally don't like to use these every day. As I keep mentioning, I've got very mild rosacea on my cheeks, so my skin doesn't take kindly to using something like this every single day, but you can build up tolerance to it. And what that's gonna do is that is gonna help with, if it's an AHA, it's gonna help even out your skin tone, it's gonna keep that hydration in your skin, and it can potentially help with fine lines as well. And I'll wait for just a minute until it starts to tingle. Starting to tingle. That makes me think it's quite a high percentage if it's starting to tingle, especially when it's in something like a cream, which would usually buffer that kind of sensation. Um, maybe it's not best to use this every day. Binter's Daughter, a little serum that I love. My Juice Beauty Concealer, because it doesn't have any parabens in it, you just have to warm it up in your hand for a second. The fear mongering behind parabens has to go. I know this is what her brand is all about, that clean beauty. Again, another unregulated term. Clean means absolutely nothing within the skincare world. Parabens are actually one of the most studied and safest preservatives within cosmetics. What's scarier to me is that all the alternative preservatives don't have a lot of research behind them. We don't know how they kind of like work in the long run. And this kind of fear mongering behind parabens is based off a study um, from years ago, years ago, that was misinterpreted and the media took hold of that and told everyone they were gonna get cancer if they used parabens, basically. So they're using fear tactics and fear mongering in order to sell their paraben-free, preservative-free products. Little on the old chin there. This is one of my favorite products. Bronzing in color. 
and a little of the Tata Harper Cheek Volumizer. As you can see, I don't use tons of foundation normally. I believe in freckles. This fantastic Juice Beauty mascara, which is a clean mascara that works beautifully, which is really hard to do. Again, clean doesn't mean anything. That's It's not a um, regulated term. You know, it doesn't mean anything, but um, I'm glad she's got a mascara that works for her. And then when I'm feeling a little frisky, I use this Kosas Red, completely non-toxic, which is very hard to achieve. It's not, it's not, it's not hard to achieve. None of your lipstick is gonna have toxins in. There is nothing in lipstick that is going to kill you. You're not going to get lead poisoning from lipstick. You're not going to get like, you're not going to ingest it and then die. It, it's these fear mongering words and tactics that she uses herself to promote her own brand. Non-toxic doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything. Cosmetic formulators, cosmetic chemists aren't these evil genius masterminds that work in a lab trying to poison everyone. A brand wants their cosmetics to be good. A brand wants you to like their cosmetics. A brand doesn't want you to die from using their products. This fear mongering needs to stop. It's Oh, it's so annoying. Next up, we're gonna to go to James Charles. This is quite an old routine, and I think I've actually reacted to this before, um, but let's see what he's up to. All right, you guys, I just found the water and it's currently heating up. The first thing that I'm gonna do is actually part one of my skincare routine. I'm gonna grab my Sanitas Lemon Cream Cleanser. This is like really done wonders for my skin. I'm just gonna put it good and fresh like that much amount on my hands, and... He talks so fast, it's hard to keep up. Um, I have looked at this ingredient before. It's a nice cleanser. I believe it's very, very expensive. I believe it's like $100 or something. It's not worth that. Um, but you know, if you can afford it, why not? It's a it's a decent cleanser. He's about to wash his face in the shower though. And we mentioned earlier before that personally, I like to wash my face out of the shower. That hot water shouldn't really be like gushing all over your face. You should be using lukewarm water on your face. The kind of temperature that might be a little bit too cold for your body. <laughs> it's scolding him. <laughs> and then he's gonna put his face under it. Th this is another thing that leads to dryness because it's trans epidermal water loss. You're literally losing water and moisture from your face. Really scrub it up down that off my face while it's still a little bit dry. Then I just have this like weird, like mix thing. It basically just puts like little honeycomb shapes on here. I just put two fingers in it on the clear side and I use it to scrub off my facial cleanser because this also acts as an exfoliant. I've tried my skincare routine two times a day both work. So yes, this is an exfoliating step. It doesn't look like the harshest thing, but it doesn't even look like the softest thing to use. I just don't like the, I don't like the term scrub. I think when you're scrubbing, you shouldn't ever be scrubbing at your skin. It sounds harsh. It sounds harsh. Morning and night, so my nighttime routine is a lot more like vigorous because that's when I'm scrubbing off all my makeup from the day. So usually when I'm doing this in the morning, not too much comes up, but I do like to still do like a good job. For some reason, I do like most of my foundation or mascara, stay on my face. Okay, I have to be honest, I didn't understand a lot of that. I need subtitles sometimes. He speaks so fast. But from what I gathered and from what I thought in, in the previous video where I talked about his skincare routine, he does this twice a day and he says that in the evening when he scrubs, a lot more comes off. Um, if he's wearing makeup, again, I always think you should be doing like an oil double cleanse um, to get that makeup off first. I wouldn't be exfoliating with makeup on. It's You want to exfoliate on clean skin. You shouldn't exfoliate twice a day. You shouldn't be doing a manual exfoliation like this twice a day. You can see actually his skin is getting redder the more he does this. And then I'm just going to grab my next up, which is the Sanitas Vitamin C Serum. I do have like normal skin, but I do get very, very dry, especially in my beard area when I get my laser treatments. So again, like hopping out the shower and immediately applying like a, even like a moisturizer straight away onto damp skin is gonna help with that dryness. So I love using this after my cleanser and after the shower, just to give my skin a nice refresh of vitamin C and hydration. And then last but finally not least, following that vitamin C serum, I always like to apply a little bit of moisturizer to really lock everything in place. And to complete the routine, this is the Tatcha Dewy Skin Cream. I really like this cream. I didn't want to use it because it's so expensive and it's got a load of crap in, I have to be honest with you. But my skin really, really like this cream. Pro tip, if you're someone like me that has nails, just use your knuckle instead so you don't have to 
Could it end there at all? This product actually comes with a, pack, um, a spatula attached to the packaging, so Eva, Eva is fine. I'm just going to put this right over top of that serum, kind of mixing them together. Alright you guys, my skin is feeling so soft, looking so dewy and hydrated. I am obsessed with this. I know that's super, super short. I feel like when everybody asks for a skincare routine, they're expecting like 100 million products, but I truly believe in quality over quantity, though we've heard that a million times on this channel. Um, but yeah, those are like the four to five products that I use every single day that really, really have worked for me. Yeah, that's true. You don't have to have like a million products in order for your skincare routine to be good. Good. Less is usually more, as we know, dermatologists always recommend you stick to like three or four main steps. He didn't finish on his sunscreen though, and that's one thing that you do have to have if you live in California and you're going to go out in that weather, you need to put on a sunscreen. That Tatcha uh, moisturizer is very dewy, it's very heavy, so it doesn't sit that nicely under sunscreen. It's a moisturizer I'd usually say for the evening. So those are the four celebrities we're reacting to today. Let me know what you think of their routine, but that is it from me now, guys. I will see you next time.